Qubit Torrent is a lightweight torrent client and in this video I will show you how to get up and running with Qubit Torrent using Docker Compose. Welcome back Geek Army. As you may know, my goal is to walk you through the process of building a Docker-based media server step by step. We're at a point where we now have a strong foundation using Docker, Docker Compose, Traffic, and either Google OAuth or Authelia for a good authentication layer. If you're lost, the link should be displayed right about now for the playlist. You will also find the link in the description below. So go back and watch my previous videos and come back and continue if that is going to help you. And if you like my style of showing you how to build the server step by step using these detailed articles on my website, my GitHub repository, which is my real setup, and now these videos, then please consider becoming a member. That is what is financially helping me to do these videos. And if you're not in a position to spend, no worries at all. You can still show your support freely by just liking this video and subscribing to my channel to boost the numbers up. And eventually that might lead to some sponsorships. Okay, back to the video. There is a reason I am doing this video on CupidTorrent setup using Docker Compose. Many of you have asked me for a video on gluten. I will do that in a three part series starting with this one. So trust me, we will eventually get there. But for now, let's see how to set up CupidTorrent using Docker Compose. CupidTorrent is my favorite torrent client. It has all the bells and whistles of most other torrent clients. It works on many different platforms, including Docker, and it's lightweight. It's why I have it on my list of 60 best Docker containers for your home server. So let's begin. All right, here I am on my Proxmox web interface as I usually do. Here you can see the container 800, the LXC container 800, which I have been building as I walk through different steps in the process of building a server. I'm already SSH into this LXC container. Here you can see the traffic dashboard, which is already running from that container. So here I am, I'm gonna do sudo docker ps so you can see what's already running. Now we built all of these things as a part of my previous video. So go back and watch those if you want to see how we got here. So I have Portainer running traffic, forward authentication or Google OAuth, Authelia, Dozel, homepage traffic and socket proxy running. And we're gonna be adding Cupid Torrent to this mix right here. Now, if you're not familiar with my setup, I really like to keep all my services in their own Docker Compose file in a folder called Compose. So we're gonna head over to that folder right here and we're gonna create a new file for qubit torrent, qubit torrent.yaml. Now, this is an empty file. We're gonna be adding the compost to this file right here. And then later on, we'll have to pull this file in to a master docker compost file, and we will see that as well. So where do you get the compost snippet? Right here. I'm gonna show it to you right here. I will paste pin it and put a link down below because the ones that you will find in my GitHub repository have additional features built in like gluten VPN and D unhealth for auto healing. All of these are already built in. We're gonna be covering all of those things step by step later on. So I don't want to confuse you guys. So here is the simplest Docker Compose file as I have done with the other services that we just saw on the command line. So. I'll copy this part right here. Ignore the last line because I am expecting that QubitTorrent won't work at the end and I want to show you how to fix it. So that's why this one is right here. So we're gonna copy this part right here and I will paste it in here. So we're gonna have to make some changes to it. Let's see what changes though. I will comment out, I will comment out the profiles part because at least for the video series, I haven't been using profiles so we can comment that out or maybe I have, I'm not really sure. So I'm gonna open up one of my other ones. Let's open up Portainer and see how I have been doing. Yes, I did comment out profiles. I use that for some of the automation. So watch out or check my other videos and some, some of the videos I do use it. So let's comment that out. QubitTorrent is going to be available via traffic reverse proxy. Uh, it works on port 8080 inside the container. Now outside the container on the Docker host, we are mapping it to 8081. So the way to access it would be the Docker host IP 
8081. Then uh, we have the app data and Qubit Torrent. Docker would automatically create this and we'll have to map the downloads folder as well. So, so that's there. And what else? There we have some traffic labels right here. One change I will have to make is the domain name. I think I've been using domain name underscore one, so I will make the change. And uh, Qubit Torrent is behind Google OAuth in this case. So I can put it behind Authelia or uh, just by changing this to chain Authelia, but I'm gonna put it behind no auth for now because I don't want to be sitting here and logging in to Authelia and everything. So no auths change. So we'll just have the login from Qubit Torrent. Okay, so there you go. So I'm gonna save this right now. So let's see, uh, we have to check on a few different things. First, let's go into the Docker folder, CD Docker, which is a Docker root folder. And I'm gonna do sudo nano.env and that's going to open up um, my environment file. I don't see a downloads folder right here. So I'm going to create or set that variable downloads the R and I'm going to set it to home. It doesn't really matter. Set it to where your downloads are. I'm going to set it to home on and then downloads. Okay. So let's do that. And I'm going to go back in here and touch a directory called downloads. So Torrent finds that. If it doesn't exist, I think it automatically creates it too, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, so downloads is done. Next, what I will have to do is to add Qubit Torrent to the master Docker Compose file. So if I go back in here, um, here is the master Docker Compose file or the index file, however you prefer to call it. Right here at the bottom is where we pull in all the different Docker Compose files. So I will copy this and maybe I can even create a new category or I like to keep them all separated, organized, I don't know, OCD, whatever. So, so I will call this downloads. So these will be download related apps. So I'll paste this in here and then I'm going to change the name to Qubit Torrent because that's the name of our compost file. So Qubit Torrent, right? Okay. So we did that. I'm going to save this as well. So once this is saved and now if I do if I do a Docker Compose up for the stack or use my bash aliases that I have used in all of my previous videos, which simplifies the usage of some of the Docker and Docker Compose commands, that would be DC up and it's going to up any services that we just created newly. So we should see a list. So it's pulling Qubit on, which is a good sign. All the rest of the apps in the stack are already running. So nothing will happen to those. Only Qubit Torrent will be pulled and started. So let's wait for that to happen and then continue. Okay, so Qubit Torrent has been started. Uh, Jellyfin was off, I see, but it started as well. So here we go. So now if I do sudo docker logs Qubit Torrent or my bash alias is DC logs. By the way, I'll put a link to the article on my website that talks about bash aliases and how I use them. So if you want to know more about it or if you like the way I'm doing it, check that one out. So DC logs logs qubit torrent is going to show me the logs and i want to note down something important from here because here you can see qubit torrent used to have a default username and password now it appears not the case here is the username and here is the temporary password that has been created so i want to copy this and then i'm going to head over to i'm going to open up my google chrome and head over to 192.168.1.187 is the IP address of the Docker host. And remember 8081 was the port unauthorized. This is the error that I was talking about. This is why I had this little bit of code right at the end right here. It doesn't work. And this is what this is how you can authorize yourself. You can let Jupyter let you log in through an insecure interface. So we're going to copy this over to the Qubit Torrent configuration. Where does it exist? It's in the app data folder, go into app data, Qubit Torrent, Qubit Torrent, and then the configuration file, which is the conf file. We're gonna edit that and right under, let's see where here, right here, preferences. We're gonna copy that. Host, host header validation, and we're gonna set it to false. And oh wait, it's not going to work. I will have to stop the container first. So before I save that, let me stop Qubit Torrent. Once again, my bash aliases DC stop Qubit Torrent, and that's going to stop the container. Okay, so 
let's do that and uh, we are going to we're gonna uh, save this part now and there you go it's saved now i'm gonna recreate it dc rack docker compost recreate qubit torrent now that should be up in just a few seconds now the password might change so we'll have to open up the logs and copy the password again so dc logs qubit torrent and this should give me the new password you can see it's been changed okay so that was the password so now let's go back to this one and refresh it hopefully we should see it now okay there you go we are in so admin and the password i just copied over i am in so qubit torrent is up and running for us now let's see if it's available via traffic because what is the uh, i'm gonna go back in here for a second what is the subdomain we used oh this was a copy paste from another um one so again i'll have to recreate it let's call it qubit qubit okay so i'm gonna save this file now any changes you make to the docker compost file is not dynamic which means i have to recreate and which means i have to check the logs again so let's do that so i just recreated qubit torrent and then we're gonna check the logs to get the new password and let's see if qubit torrent is available via traffic so copy the password it over here qubit.simplehomelab.com and there you go it's there it's available it's ready to go so admin and then i'm copying the password and we are in so qubit torrent is ready all right let's make sure qubit torrent is working and we're not you know finding any errors or anything like that so let's download a torrent file and make sure that it works now before we do that let's head over to the docker compost for a bit if you see right here, we're mapping the downloads folder to slash data slash downloads inside the container itself. You are welcome to change the path inside the container if you so prefer. So let's head over to Qubitor interface. So I'm gonna upload a torrent right here, pick a file. By default, it's you can see that it offers slash downloads, which is not the right path. We have our download folder. It should be data slash downloads. You can change this in the settings after you've... I'm not going to show you how to do that, but just for you to know, if you don't do this, you are going to encounter uh, permissions denied error. So here I have Ubuntu uh, ISO file torrent. So I'm going to upload that right now. Now let's see if it works. So I'm going to go over to all right here. It's downloading right now. So we are good to go. All right, that was it. It's really easy to set up Qubit Torrent using Docker and Docker Compose file. But keep in mind that Qubit Torrent is now exposed. If you want to protect your activity using a VPN, watch out for my next video using gluten. We're going to do exactly that. So come back for that video. Thank you for watching this video so far. I will see you in my next video. Go Geek Army.